everybody, welcome back. Got another more VOD review here. Uh, this one uh, is Master 5 on console. Looks like we're on New Queen Street. Now, this is a win. I haven't skipped ahead to see how, <clears throat> if it was real one-sided or not. But 11 minutes seems like it's uh, probably pretty close. Uh, this player says uh, they think they did pretty solid. First two deaths were really dumb. Think they shouldn't have died. Uh, but they think they did well in the team fights. Um, pretty new. To Moira, I don't know if they're pretty new to Overwatch. Uh, it says they played Moira since the last season of Overwatch 1. So it's, I, I'd say that's that's pretty new. So um, being in Master 5, I think that's uh, that's a pretty big accomplishment to make it uh, to make it that far in that short of time. Okay, so uh, first things first, a couple of things about this map. I, I tend to kind of shift where I go. It just depends. Uh, but I will tell you, I, I, I very rarely go here first. Um, because it's the low ground, I don't like to be down here. Uh, a lot of times with Moira, I'll go over here. Same thing if I'm playing DPS. I'll go over here. Now, you will get forced out of here very quick because their team's going out of over here. But you don't know that, and that's okay, right? It's okay to go over here and go, get forced out because if you go over here and then there's nobody here, now you, now you control the high ground, right? And then you don't have to worry about getting forced out. So... Uh, in this instance, I still would have gone over here, right? Seeing that there's three of them over here, including the tank, um, I'm not going to stay there, right? But if I can distract them for a little bit, it'll potentially help my team uh, go maybe push this ash or something. Once I see their team comp, uh, I'm probably going to try and bully the person that the Mercy is not pocketing, right? She'll typically kind of stay with one person usually. Um, and I would try and, and bully the uh, person that she's not pocketing. Their team comp is actually going to be kind of hard for you to isolate anybody, but so we'll see. See, because right now, all you can do is heal, Okay. You don't have a lot of opportunity to do anything else, and that's because you're kind of you're down in the pit here. You're down in the low ground. If you were up here, actually, since your Genji went in over there, you might have been able to to help out with this a little bit more, All right? And then maybe he wouldn't have died there. Uh, I don't like that orb because it's going to tickle them and then just fly off into space. Put yourself in a position where you can get more value out of your orb. So again, if you were up here, right? Because you can play around the statue. If you were up here, right, they might chase you around the statue or whatever, but they, it's going to be pretty hard to kill you. None of them have really high burst damage except for the soldier's rocket, um, and you can kind of bait that out. So anyway, coming up here and shooting orbs, if you shoot an orb against this back wall right here, it'll bounce directly back and it'll come back towards you. Okay, um, So all of everything you're doing can be done better from up here. And a lot of times that's that's just the truth, right? Overwatch is a game of high ground. You know, there's that that Star Wars meme about what's his face having the high ground. Um, you know, that's that's true. That was <laughs> not just a meme, right? Uh, that's true in, in in anything where high ground is uh, is a case. So yeah, I'd agree with you. I'd say that death was a little bit unnecessary. Um, I I don't want to challenge the soldier face-to-face, -face, especially if he's got the, the mercy with him because they don't have a mercy now, which is good because now you have somebody you can bully because the chances of this Zen being alone are really high because the Moira is going to be off doing Moira things. Um, and you can see right now, even the Zen, he's, you know, he was the last person to jump down, right? And he's probably always going to be the furthest in the back. So you can look for those opportunities. Like right here, we're just healing. We're not doing anything but healing. You ran out of, you ran a spray. Um, good place to shoot a damage orb uh if i'm here is I'll, I'll actually shoot it over against this wall so it'll bounce back this way okay so there's a lot of rounded edges here like that and these um which can really screw up your orb bounces i've noticed especially the newer maps have a lot of this more complex geometry um so you kind of have to play around that but um you still have to play around it so just keep that in mind look for the flat surfaces when you can So this is good, right? You're, you, you know, you're getting, getting your resource meter. But yeah, so you just realized, yeah, I'm just right in front of them, not really doing anything. Okay. Uh, you're definitely heal botting. I wish I could see 
I wish I could see some stats here. Um, yeah, another one. Yeah, your heal botting, well, you died because you're tunnel visioned. All you're doing is looking around on your team for who has low health and you're just running to them and healing. Okay. So I talk about in a lot of videos, you can heal damage or you can prevent damage. And preventing damage, okay, so uh, actually, <laughs> while we're on this topic, I used to get caught on this friggin' thing all the time. It's irritating because the exactly where you spawn, you want to fade, jump, and then you jump, and then you end up standing on this stupid door jam up here, okay? Um, when I fade out of here, you can either not jump, or if you jump, you have to jump like the very, very last like frame millisecond, and you won't jump as high. It'll move you further forward, okay? Uh, until you can perfect that, I would recommend just fading out and not jumping because it'll actually save you more time than just landing on that stupid door sill every time. So right now, I want to be looking for damage. I want to be looking for damage. I want to be looking for a target that I can isolate and I can beam down with my coalescence. Okay. Um, their Zen has ult, right? I would I would be looking to force that out. That would be that would be my goal here. Because trading coalescence for trans is huge. Because trans takes longer to build. Right? Unless you got this god Zen who's doing a ton of damage. Um, you can you can farm your coalescence faster than he can get another trans. So it really helps your ult economy if you can you if you can force that out. Uh, okay, we're still holding on to our ult here. Okay, because you could have counter cold there, you could have coalescence the uh the grav to help keep your your team up. Um, yeah, this is another case of it. we're not really doing anything. Ooh, that's close. Okay, so you know he's over there. That's good. That's good, right? If you have a a teammate off by themselves and they're they're trying to take an off angle. Supporting with that is is something that Moira does really well because you can go bounce over to them, help them secure that kill, and then fade over to to somewhere else. It's a good jump. Okay, we still haven't used our coalescence. Okay, uh, don't hold on to your coalescence this long because at this rate, the Zen's going to have another transcendence by the time you use your coalescence, and so you can call right there. There you go. There's an easy coal target right there. Win. Okay. Um, okay. He's going to have another transcendence by the time you use and get your coalescence. Okay. And it, it's going to make, make it hard for you to out cycle him. Okay. All right. I didn't, let's go back to this. Why does it do that sometimes? So you didn't really have a, a big reason to coalescence here. You did have a reason to coalescence here because one, you make them all turn around and look at you and it helps your team kind of like collapse onto their team, right? I, I get it. But you had, your orb was off cooldown in two seconds and that's another 200 damage that you just get, right? When you use coalescence. So... Uh, it's interesting because they chased your monkey anyway. So like, your your coalescence didn't work, right? Your coalescence was to try and get them to take the pressure off your monkey, and I, I like that. You could have waited the extra two seconds, and right, it it would have helped you probably beam down one of them a little bit better. Um, I I. I don't think it was a great coalescence, and it's certainly not one worth waiting that long for. Because look at the Zen; he's already, you know, seventy percent to his ult, and you, you know you're only at nineteen. Okay, and Moira's ult builds so fast, you could you can catch him. But then again, you know, once again, you're you're kind of you're you're trading ults, and also the their Moira is out cycling you with ultimates.
So, so far, what I'd like to see is definitely more looking for isolated targets and targeting them and not just staying with the core of your team, okay? Uh, not holding onto your coalescence and, and looking for a, the opportunity to use it faster, okay? And there, there were definitely some opportunities. It, Using coalescence does not have to be a five man thing. You don't have to hit everybody, right? All you got to do is chase down. Look at that. See, you're not, you don't even have your ult yet. And he's already, that's the second trans. Um, I forgot what I was saying. <laughs> you Use your coalescence faster, right? That way you don't get out tempoed by the enemy team. Because right now, again, we're just kind of heal botting, which. Here's the thing. Sometimes that works well, right? But a lot of the times it's not really necessary. If your team was going to win the fight, they were going to win the fight anyway. All right? And I'd rather see you using that somewhere else. Um, a couple of things. If you didn't know, since... Well, push is new to Overwatch 2, so I guess anybody is new. Uh in push, having more people on the robot does not make it move faster. It moves at the same speed whether there's one person on it or five people on it. Okay, it is it is not like. Okay, here's a good coalescence opportunity. Okay, so why is that a good coalescence opportunity? Can you heal your brig? No. What can you do? Put a ton of pressure on them and take the pressure off of her, and maybe she lives. And then if she lives long enough for the ante to wear off, then, then you heal her and you keep your team going. So uh, here's another opportunity to use Coalescence. Okay. And is that, is that going to say you would have saved her? Nope. Maybe not. But I would have tried there, when she, especially because she had her ult active. Yeah, I'd like to see more off-angling from you. And off-angling does not mean you have to be off in crazy land somewhere. Off-angling means, right, you're here. Yeah, you get pushed out by the Reaper. That's fine. Or over here, right? You're not directly behind this. You don't need to be directly behind the core of your team. The more you spread out this, this front line, okay, the more directions the enemy team has to look and the more likely it is that they're not all going to focus the same target. So that Cassidy was out of position, right? He was too close, and she can run him down. That Stuff like that is never your fault, okay? And I would never blame a support for that. Okay. But... He, he, you guys are kind of all over the place right now. And I don't mean, like, because if you're, you know, several people are taking off angles, right, it's going to feel like you're kind of all over the place. But you guys are engaging at different times. If you're engaging at different times, then they, the enemy team has the opportunity to focus targets. I actually like that orb. It would have been better if you did it, like, right at that window, and it'll actually come back. It'll come back. Which is always helpful. Okay, so the Junker Queen's about to ult here. Yeah. So, <clears throat> people telegraph what they're going to do a lot. It's uh, it's something you'll I think that you'll kind of gain with experience. But here's here's how you can kind of gain that experience faster. Okay. Go back and watch these replays. And you can even turn this off if you want. but Or you could start with it on. Um, before I even looked at this, I was like, Junker Queen has ult. And then I looked, she was at 95%. So she was close, right? Um, and then what you do is you go to where they use their ults and then watch like the 10 seconds before they ult or 15 seconds before they ult from their point of view, right? And your point of view or 
just any point of view where you, you can see them. Um, you can see their behaviors and, and people kind of telegraph their alts. And what I mean by telegraph is that it's, there's like a thing, you know, that they'll do before they alt, right? It's like them giving you a preview of what they're about to do uh, through their, through their positioning and, and behavior, right? That Junker Queen was kind of running forward ahead of the ahead of the robot, and you guys were all there. She's gonna ult. Like basically, that's <laughs> you know that's it. Okay, so now we're holding on to our coalescence again, right? Look, don't just stand here. Go and look for opportunities to do damage. And to put pressure, right? They have an Ana now, right? It's that same the player that was playing Zen, okay? Go bully that person. Press tab, see what they have. And go put some pressure on them. She's over here. They are all looking over here. Go give her a hard time. So, if you go over there and beam her, right? She's going to start looking at you. If she's looking at you, she's not damaging your team and she's not healing hers. All right, she's not using her cooldowns. And now she's dead, right? So you could have done that. You could have helped that happen faster, right? Because if she's looking at you, then she's definitely not looking at your Cassidy. Looks like this is actually a really close game. That's good. Yeah, and there was definitely an opportunity. I would call right here. That's it, right? The Ash is there. Everybody's coming out of spawn. This is how you stagger them, and you make it harder for them to... Easy, right? The the diva got the kill, but now the Anna's already outside. Hundred percent coal here, and and stagger the shit out of their team, right? Because now the Anna has no cooldowns. She used her grenade and she used her sleep. I would fade up there and kill her ass right now. Because now, right? You just heal button. There's no reason for you to be on here. She's gonna get her cooldowns back. Okay, you didn't use your orb again. I, you may maybe you don't know this. Okay, so practice this. It's it, it's not hard. It'll take you like two tries to figure it out. What you do is you cast your orb, and as soon as the orb flies out, you cast your coalescence. It's called an animation cancel. So you throw the orb and then cast your coalescence like immediately, right? And it'll it'll cancel the rest of the orb and animation, and it'll start your coalescence. So that does two things. It gets you from your orb to your coalescence quicker and then it also allows you to use an orb during the ultimate right because the, the orb cooldown and the ultimate are the same length right eight seconds so it's good fade yeah you you definitely are a heal bot okay and i think you're gonna you'll find that you'll be able to climb a lot higher um if, if you get it right from that look that anna's over there by herself just go kill her you're sucking a thousand a thousand hit point bob go kill the Ana, right she ends up dying right because your team's kind of picking up your slack okay um it looks like this is about it yeah i, I would say you got carried a little bit in this game so you know you, you did some things well right but i i think you got carried a little bit and there was a lot of opportunity for you to carry your team by giving their team a hard time, right? So big picture, I want to see from you. Uh, work on your positioning a little bit. Try and use the high ground a little more, okay? Like what I talked about in the very beginning. Use your coalescence for a purpose, right? Use it to beam somebody down. Just use it. Get it out. You're going to you're gonna build it again really quickly. You don't need a big five-man, ten-man ult, right, where you're hitting all your team and all the enemy team. Uh, that Nobody cares about that stuff. Just get a single kill, and that's all you need to swing a team fight. Uh, and then work on, you know, isolating targets just in general. Look for opportunities for you to to look for people who are by themselves. Look for people who you can distract, right? You Some of your best healing is going to come from stuff that doesn't show up on the scoreboard, right? Because you're preventing that damage, okay? Uh, and then uh, with your ultimates, again, just use that uh, uh, animation and cancel, and uh, you'll, you'll start getting more value out of your ultimates. So... All right, so that's some that's some stuff to work on. Um, 
and I hoped it helped. So let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.